Hello people, how's it going? It's Luke. I'm back again for another video and this one is on emotions. This one is on emotions guys. It's my second take actually because this is a tough one. My last one I was um and ah and things like that. You may even get that in this video as well. So this video is about emotions because before I've got a lot of videos to do but it has to stem from this one. This one has to, to, to come first before I can kind of do those ones. Um, really, it's, it's um, like I said in the previous video, it's kind of like chapter two, it's, it's how do we become a, a worthwhile member of our communities? How do we become someone that if something was to happen to them, we would feel almost like, you know, we feel emptiness and sadness. So we, when you see funerals and you see a large number of people down the road, attending that funeral we want to become that guy or girl we want to become that person and what does it take to become that person um and I, I no one is perfect no one is perfect but how do we turn into someone or strive to be someone remember what i said in one of my videos my previous videos that um don't strive to be right strive to be righteous how do we become that righteous person that still knows how to to hold his ground and to do what needs to be done, you know, step, step up uh, as a man and um, protect his family and um, his community. Um, although, you know, your family comes first. There are times in our life. I, I was having this conversation with a friend the other day because in London, there was this London, I think it was London stabbings, basically. I think it was three guys drove up London in a van and they put like uh, bricks in the back of the van so that it was uh, more weighty um, I think it was a whole bunch of bricks basically they put in the back of the van so as there so and then they basically drove into people um, about six seven in the evening so it was quite crowded um, people coming back from rush hour drove into a whole bunch of people um, drove them over and then uh, when they couldn't move the van and then suddenly got out the van and they had these kind of uh, um, put plastic bombs attached to their waist but in the darkness you can't really see what it is it looks it practically looks like a bomb so they're stepping towards people with these bombs attached to them are fake bombs and they've also got some sort of um i think it was machete in their hands and i was having a discussion with a friend of mine and she was saying um i was saying to her that you know it's easy to say that you'll jump up at the time and be a hero and risk your life and things like that but at the time, you'll never really know what you're likely to do. Um, it's not, if you haven't really been in experience, especially if you haven't been in experience where you've um, regularly been fighting. If I haven't regularly been fighting, and I'm on London I'm on London Bridge and these guys are stepping up with bombs attached to them and knives in their hands, I might be, if it was fight or flight, I may, I don't know, I'm, I may turn around and run. It's easy to sit on here now on the internet and say, oh, well, you know what, yeah, I would have just run up to them and I would have just taken all of them out. And if my life ended them, it's easy to say that. But when that fight or flight thing comes, you just, you don't know. The only person that would really know is if, like I said, if you're regularly in scraps. And what this, what this woman turned around and said, she goes, you know, you know, um, what do you say? Again, inexperienced woman doesn't really know much. She hadn't, she hadn't lived a hard life, basically. But what she turned around and she said was, um, yeah, you, um, it's hard to know whether you're going to be a coward or whether you're going to be a man. I was like, well, 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 it's got nothing to do with being a coward. And then what she went on and tried to explain about her, from her point of view, she said, listen, well, if I've got children, then I may be hesitant to suddenly jump in and attack these guys because I know I've got kids at home and I know that no one's going to raise these kids, so it might be, it's not the same. It's easy to, to say you'll do those things. So this is just getting back to that whole community thing. Like when I say that, you know, decent people protect their, their family and the community, that may always not be the case. Sometimes it is just your family. I think your family is enough. Um, I always believe that you'd save the world one person at a time. That's how I look at it. It's, 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 you do as much as you can do. I think some people, one person at a time, others can jump out and and share their love with the whole community. They don't feel fatigued or, and that's another video I'm gonna do, a video on energy, because um, that's an important video.
but getting to this one on emotions um, so again so let's get back to the whole thing right so right so as we as I said in one of my videos which was the video that I did a video saying um, my final thoughts for 2018 and I kind of sum this all up if you go into it explain this is like a continuation from that video because um, I did say I'm going to go into detail on previous things that I said um, in the sell-out video I kind of went into a little bit detail on I'm oh, sorry in the insult video I went into a little bit detail on the sell-out video that I did this one's going into a little bit more detail on uh, final thoughts for 2018 it's kind of explaining but this video is about emotions so what I was explaining in that video was that when you bring a child into this world um, the very first five years has to be really important to that it has to, it's, it's really important to that child um, for many things I think a is very important that they have both parents but that will be another video again because like I said there's many videos I want to do but this has to be done first there's some people out there that believe that you know it's okay to bring a child into the world and then push the other parent out and just do it all by yourself. I'm not going to go into it too much of that. All I'll say is that you know it's important that the child receives it from the parent, both mother and father. But regardless, because we know that with um, with a lot of black people, their fathers aren't there. Okay, so we'll go let's assume right so that let's assume whether it's a single parent or both parents those children or that or that child has to be shown love um, has to be shown attention yeah it has to be spoken to um, has to be you know cared about has to you know show attention ie can't be a victim of child neglect um, has to be allowed to be a child child are fidgety they do like to touch things they do like to you know touch all you know their hands and they can be a bit messy and has to be allowed to be a child um can't be pushed into being an adult there's some um parents out there that are so lonely that um the minute their child is able to talk like i'll give you a quick example i'm not going to spend too much time but um back in the day i went to a club and i met this this woman there we went back to her house and she had uh, this this little girl um I can't remember the name. I think I think either the mother's name was Monica or Mandy, but I can't remember the little girl's name. But very cute little girl. But she was one and a half. She was able to talk fully, fully, you know, comprehend what people were saying to her, um, and she could walk as well. And I remember that on the third time me going around the house, I never really called the mother by her name, and she picked up on this. So one day I'm sitting down there, and she goes. Do you know mummy's name? And I said, um, yeah, I know, yeah, I know your mum's name. She goes, what's mummy's name then? And I said, um, yeah, I know mummy's name. You know, you don't have to ask me. But so I knew her mum. I knew what the mother's name anyway it was anyway. But I just trying to figure out what's this child trying to say, kind of thing. But the child was trying to say, how dare you come round here, and you know you're acting like you're interested in mummy and you don't even know her name. But she continued anyway, so I, I kind of just ignored her when she said it the second time. But then she got angry and she turned around and she started using these adult face expressions. Do you even know mummy's name? What's mummy's name? I said, well, well. And then um, the mother goes, you know, you tell her my name. And I goes, yeah, your mum's name is Monica, okay? Like, relax. But what I got from it was that maybe the mother had had kind of spoken to this child like she was like a best friend um she had based obviously you know i've seen like i've seen certain youtube videos as well where the the mothers are kind of um they're influencing their daughters in the wrong way they're more friends than mothers and they're sharing a little too much with a baby at that age so the child is, 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 is way beyond their age and they believe that their child is super intelligent and things like that but a child really what you've done is wrong because you're kind of robbing your child of their childhood a child should be able to be a child they don't need to be rocket science at the age of one and a half two years old they don't need to they should be able to be a child smile laugh have fun do silly things so if you brought this child into the world and as that the very early develop um very early 
childhood years um, they're being exposed to maybe violence they're being exposed for, to sex they're being um, neglected they're being exposed to drugs have you seen on YouTube baby smoking and things like that and what makes me laugh is that um, there's one video where this woman even offers the child a cigarette uh, there's one thing baby smoking but there's another one I don't know if you've seen it on YouTube where this kid's trying to get people to light his cigarette just to see who would do it and one woman says hey give me the give me the um, the, give me the um, what's, what is it no, he's asking people for a lighter. She goes, come here, I've got a lighter. I used to do it at your age, so why not? I started at your age. But, you know, again, she would have been an awful parent. Awful. Um, so, drugs. Uh, what else would be, what, what else can you expose a child to? Um, some people sit their kids in front of their TVs and then let the TV raise the child, you know. If you're not... If you don't have the time... Or, and, and let's face it, some people, we aren't, you know, when we have kids, there is no parenting book. Some, sometimes, well, some of us, or some, like my mother and her generation, had to kind of figure out as they went along. Um, but the vital, the vital things that we know is that a mother is a nurturer and the father is more like, therefore, kind of like the discipline but also shows the child, the, the child strength and um, continuity um, and, and, and and discipline really where you know but the point I'm making is that the, the two of them work together and if the child isn't shown that then what happens is that child from the age of about five six years old doesn't know how to actually control their emotions their emotions become too extreme um, and this is what's important because in my life I've realized that a lot of people they go when they think of disabilities they think of someone that is um, disabled they think of someone in a wheelchair they think of someone um, in constant pain they don't, there's not many people out there that understand about mental health. But if we get back to what I was saying about that child that um, that is unable to control their emotions because their parents most likely couldn't control it themselves. There's even some parents out there that, that how, how they're not going to be able to raise children because they're a victim of it themselves. They're a victim of a broken family or child abuse. But anyway, this child gets to say... They some they haven't been shown the right um, teachings and um, the right love and everything else from the age of five, but they're still laughing. So they're going to school, they're still laughing, they're still playing. They're still they're, some of them are able to articulate themselves, but there's certain times throughout the day that these children are going through moods, violent moods, and as far as the children know, it's a normal thing. Everyone around them is most likely going through these moods, things like that. Um, you know. They, they might be walking around the house and they're overcome with this, this strong kind of depression. But at that age, they they would say strong sadness. But they wouldn't even realise it was sadness. They'd say, I just don't feel right. Something just doesn't feel right. Um, they're in a room, that, that child is in a room now and they're socialising with other kids and they're finding it, they're, they're laughing and joking, but um, and they're kind of speaking to other kids, but they're not 100% fitting in at times. Um, and they're aware of it but they kind of say they don't know to to what extent the child doesn't know to what extent and they could be around about 8, 9, 10 years old now so they've gone through the moods they're not socially fitting in as well um, it might be a case where what else would I say um, another right so yeah, so let's just, let's just say that this child now is is um, they're getting into their teens, and socialising starts to become a bit kind of um, they start to become almost like social outcasts in a sense. Now they they start to want to be alone. They spend maybe they spend a lot of time being isolated from people because they they find it socially awkward. 
um, in order to fit in. Um, they get to say, say 15, 16, and now the sign now they're heading into secondary school, and now they're well aware. By this time now, they're well aware that um, something is definitely not a hundred percent right with them. They might start to blame themselves and say, "Maybe I'm stupid, and maybe it's this, and maybe it's that." I remember we have to we have to we have to remember how we started off with this thing. We're talking about when you bring your child into this world and the love and this and that. Anyway, they're fourteen, fifteen. They're starting to the question. Why is it that I'm finding it socializing hard? Why is it that um, my, my they might have problems with concentration? Um, they may have problems. Um, they might have emotional outbursts, so their moods might be slightly um, off the charts. So something that they should really get over ends up affecting them for a lot longer. Um, what else? What else would I say? All right. So I'm going to come up with part two. Um, so so far, let's let's recap on when we've got to. The child has been brought into this world. They haven't been shown that much love. There's a number of things that happening that they've seen, that they've experienced. They may even experience something like child trauma. Um, it may be child sexual abuse. It may be a victim of bullying. Um, it may be malnutrition. It might be them being teased because they're overweight, underweight. There's many things, okay? Um, but a majority of it actually could have been could have been stopped had had maybe their parents have noticed so to a certain to degree we can say they're they've been a, they're, maybe they've experienced maybe they're a victim of child neglect um right so we're going to go into part two and we're going to explain how how emotions now um def almost define who they are and how with normal people they may be able to control it based upon how they were raised whereas other people it may be something that's a little too far beyond it's beyond their control all right see you in part two